that be the glory and praise i would like to share the third part of our uh, of my dream uh, dated august 16 and the first part actually i was talking about the angel bringing us to the ark and then the second part is uh it's been showing us uh, to keep ourselves healthy in order for us to stand to stand physically and at the same time spiritually so if there's troubles and things going around we will be able to stand and at the same time with our faith in the lord whatever things that are coming our way we're not going to be affected because our faith with the lord is so strong praise be to god continuation to that is actually i'm seeing this friend same friend of mine i brought her in this house it's a double story house and it seems to be my house you know i said this is my house it was built uh it was newly built by somebody and it was like sold to me so my parents were upstairs and then i brought her there and then as we go upstairs i was showing her my cabinet and uh, i was showing her my cabinet so you know i'm showing her my clothes and it's not just to brag about clothes because i don't have any fashionable clothes anymore since i was born again so it's the spiritual clothing that i'm trying to show and then uh, after that my parents said they wanted to rest so they're going to sleep every detail of these brothers and sisters have meaning so my parents who used to be you know used to be so hard-headed when it comes to the lord you know i believe that the lord is going to send me home uh in order for me to be able to talk to them about the coming and preparing them for the coming of jesus christ and so my parents said um they're, they're tired and they wanted to rest or not tired but they wanted to rest so they're going to sleep and then we went down the staircase of the house because it's a second story and we passed by the room of my daughter and uh, my my friend was looking at the room of my daughter and it seems like she's like you know you your children have room but my kids don't even have a room and then she saw her younger daughter who was even running on the street on a, on a, on the mud playing on the puddle with barefoot and so after that what happened was i was offering her or before that i was offering her food to eat i said what would you like to eat and we're talking about food here right now and this friend of mine brothers and sisters she's my best friend she is a christ uh, not christian but a catholic and now she married a muslim guy and so you know catholics uh, are doing idolatry with their statues and at the same time the muslims they don't believe in jesus christ and we all know jesus is the only way to god the father and so after that scenario changed i saw my aunt looking at the dirty puddle of water and uh, she was you know she's trying to look for fish in there can you find fish in a small puddle and especially if it's dirty we all know that jesus was feeding uh the people who follow him with the clean water because he is the living water and he's feeding them with a fish and so we can't find jesus in a dirty puddle and you can't find fish in a dirty puddle jesus is a pure clean living water and so scenario change again and i i saw her holding a baby and she said uh she used to be traveling a lot but she was like deported and she and she i think her documents were expired and she's not able to travel anymore so when you're deported it's like you're an exile you can no longer back to your place and we all know that even moses and the disciples or the the israelites before they were like exiles they were like going out of the place that they're supposed to be but the lord promised if you follow me jesus said you know in the bible i just can't find the uh, the verse if we follow the lord he promised he's going to bring us to our land to the promised land and so the scenario changed again and uh, the last part of that dream i'm seeing this uh, son of uh, son-in-law of mine and uh, he was like um, talking to a guy and they were like saying that um, he they're charging him so much money for his restaurant or something and then uh, i was saying you know you're 
you're not making money anymore because they're being char you're they're charging you too much and i pray to the lord that uh, everything will be fine and so anyway at that part of the dream also i saw my daughter and she was like fixing herself putting uh you know fixing herself and i was like braiding her hair and as i was braiding her hair she was like saying ouch because i think i was hurting her or you know not braiding her hair properly but brothers and sisters the lord spoke to us about how we braid our hair and this daughter of mine i keep on speaking she loves the lord and she's they're reading the bible and she's telling her husband about this and uh and the husband is not uh, is not a believer of jesus christ so i pray to the lord that uh, he will finally receive jesus because he's now listening to the bible and then sometimes if he for they forget to pray he will be the one to remind them hey we forgot about uh, we forgot to pray and he's now being encouraged listening to the words of god and i give the glory and praise to god because i know he will be safe praise be to god he's really kind-hearted so anyway um um this dream has something to do with all of us being prepared for the coming of the lord so what is this trying to tell us brothers and sisters god wants us to be ready not to focus number one i was showing her about the clothes god wants us to focus on uh, on our salvation the cloth of righteousness and salvation the garment of salvation and the linen or the cloth of righteousness and not focus on fashion clothes a lot of people right now they're just like shopping almost every payday to buy new clothes and they can no longer no longer uh <laughs> what's this they can no longer um how do you call that they can no longer save money because all of those are actually put on their clothes and this is probably why the Lord brought me here. I'm actually in my closet right now. And seeing this, I usually have packed the whole aisle with clothes. And I have on my, my, my suitcases, clothes, and those who are piled on the cabinet. But brothers and sisters, those are not important anymore. So that's why I throw a lot of clothes away. And I'm just putting something that are just so simple. And the Lord wants us to be humble, not to focus on the fashion of clothing, but the cloth of righteousness and garment. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. First Colossians 3 verse 10. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator, creator with his label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and unclothed, slave and free, mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in a wardrobe God picked out for you compassion kindness humility quiet strength disciple discipline be even tempered content with second place quick to forgive an offense forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you and regardless of what else you put on wear love it's your basic all purpose garment never be without it let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other, none of this going off and doing your own thing, and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of your house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing, sing your hearts out to God. Thanking God the Father every step of the way. Praise be to God. Imagine the brothers and sisters. Literally, don't focus on the fashion of clothes. 
look for um, modest clothes to cover your body not to expose your body to make other guys last on you and even girls clothe yourself modestly and at the same time spiritually clothe yourself with love peace joy discipline kindness compassion humility quiet strength discipline all of those are what we're supposed to clothe ourselves and forgiving one another that's what god wants us to wear okay and next god wants us the second one god wants us to be ready because i was offering her with the food remember first one offering her the clothes and that's what we're supposed god is offering us the cloth the spiritual clothing okay the physical we have to cloth decently spiritual the spiritual clothing now the second is the food god wants us to watch over how we eat god wants us to be ready not on debauchery of words or junk foods but food of god's words the word of god who which is you know who is jesus christ himself and the food of the spirit brothers and sisters previously the lord's telling us not to put junk on our body right not to eat eat junk foods that makes us uh, sick make us heavy and we will be having hard time to stand no he wants us to be eating healthy so we discuss about the physical eating this time it's the spiritual eating we have to eat constantly the words of god brothers and sisters we are offering food to other people and god wants us to trust in him and eat the food that will last forever jesus is the living word we know that and that's why when jesus was uh, preaching preaching to the people and people were following him my aunt was looking at dirty puddle and looking at the fish at the puddle you can find those food there God feed the disciples or the people, the follower, the followers, the Christians with the living water, with the water, literal water. And he's feeding him them with the bread of life, which represents the bread and the fish. And so the churches should be doing the same thing. Feed the people that go to their church, not just taking their money when they go to church and hey, you can go home. No. They're just trying to make money only. I know some of the churches are actually, uh, you know, helping the people. But we should also feed them just like the Lord is doing it. You know, not just like, okay, we're supposed to be making money. It's supposed to be given back to the people in order for everybody to be fed. And so Jesus is the living word. In John 1 verse 1, the Lord said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so therefore, we had to feed other people with the words of God. John 4 34, Jesus said, My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. See, that's the food of Jesus Christ, to do the will of God. And since we are eating the food of the, the living, uh, the food who is Jesus Christ, His words, we have to follow the words of God through Jesus Christ, the teaching of Jesus Christ. Jesus is following the, the will of God. We have to follow the will of God by looking at the words of Jesus Christ by eating the words of god and putting it into practice how are we going to be able to do the will of god if we accept jesus as our lord and our savior we repent from our sins and be born again we are given the holy spirit and the holy spirit coming from god will teach us what to do and that's why we have to continually feed ourselves with the words of god john 6 27 do not work for food that spoils but for food that endures to eternal life which the son of man will give you for on him god the father has placed his seal of approval see and that's the importance brothers and sisters to know get to know jesus christ 
through his words. Other people will just say, especially the Catholics, because I was raised a Catholic for a long time, and praise God that he saved me. And so now I'm born again, and I was able to, uh, to you know, I was able to, uh, to learn the words of God by reading his words. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. And now, the Lord said in John 6, 35, that Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. See that? And that's the power of the words of God. So our strength comes from God. It is also food of our spirit. The words of God, brothers and sisters, is actually the food of our soul and our spirit. And at the same time with our physical, physical body, it's actually healing our body. Because Jesus is our strength and our healer. So our strength comes from God. Listen to this in Matthew 4 verse 4. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but but." but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And that's the reason why we need to listen to or read the words of God. Because it's filling us up, healing us, and we will be given answers and teachings and wisdom and understanding by the Lord because He knows the intention of our mind and our heart. Matthew 6.25 Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Listen to that, brothers and sisters. That's what the Lord wants us to understand. It's not what we are going to shop every payday, but what we are going to prepare to clothe ourselves for the coming of Jesus Christ, the spiritual clothing, the spiritual food. The Lord said, why am I inside, okay, why am I inside this house? And we were given the house of safety. We were given a new house, and it's a two-story house that we live the Lord said, in my house, you know, in the house of the Lord, or in Jesus. Okay, let me say it again. In this dream, I was given a new house, up and down house, and it was new. And then my parents said they wanted to rest. They wanted to rest and they're going to sleep. My daughter is also resting. And we were there with my friends. We all know, brothers and sisters, in the house of the Lord, or in Jesus, in the presence of Jesus, we have peace, we have love, we have joy. That's why God said, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. See that? We can rest in the Lord. We are confident if we trust in Him and rely in Him with all our body, mind, heart, and soul. So we don't need to worry about what we're going to wear, what we're going to eat, where we're going to stay. He will provide everything we need. So brothers and sisters, the Lord said, "My, you know, just like in this dream, my parents wants to sleep and we went downstairs. And so in Exodus, 8 verse 22 to 23. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in, uh, I'm in, I'm in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will occur tomorrow. See, brothers and sisters, we were given a house. And this is not only for me, but this is for all the Christians who faithfully obey the Lord, the true remnant of God. We will be brought by the angels to the, the ark to the house, to the land of Goshen, that whatever storm, flood that will come, whatever tornado, whatever pestilence, whatever shooting and fighting, what 
every disaster that's going to come. We are going to be dealt differently by the Lord. We will be protected in the land of Goshen. Just like the time of Moses. Everybody in Pharaoh's house and those who disobey the Lord, they have the firstborn dead, the water turns into blood. All those things are happening. All those calamities are going to happen. Tornado, disasters, devastation, volcanic eruption, whatever, cracking of the land, houses will be washed away. All those things will happen to the wicked. But to the children of God, we will be protected. We will be placed in the land of Goshen. We will be placed in the ark. Just like the time of Noah. We will be protected. We will be brought in that little city. Just like the time of Lot. That when there's rain of fire. We will be protected. We will be protected by the Lord. Angels are going to bring us to safety. So brothers and sisters. We have to remember that. That's why my parents said. I truly believe. Once they will accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Once they will receive Jesus and my family, and I know they will, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, because I saw them rest. Why? Including my kids. They will rest in safety because the Lord said, Come to me, all of you who are tired and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. The Lord is going to put an end to this slavery of the demon. He's going to put an end on that because He's going to reign and He's going to come, brothers and sisters. And so God said, why am I looking at my kid's bedroom and my father's room and her kids, you know, my friend, she was looking and her kids don't have room. The Lord said in John 14 verse 3, why are you know why are we having rooms brothers and sisters just bear with me with this long video even if i wanted to cut this one short the lord wants me to to send the messages because he's been showing me a lot of promises angels and everything preparation for us and i want to finish this brothers and sisters why are we going to be given rooms john 14 verse 3 the lord said in my father's house are many rooms in my father's house are many rooms. If we were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you, for us? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and welcome you into my presence so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Outside, <laughs> did, did you see that? You know the, the way to the place where I am going. Praise be to God. There's no outside there. You know the place to the, you know the way to the place where I am going. So brothers and sisters, God is telling us that if he's going to bring us to the ark, we have a room there to stay. He is preparing us a house, a place, a room for us to stay. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, repent from your sins and be born again. He's going to bring you and save you and put you to safety. So why is it that I'm seeing a friend of mine, her son is outside playing on the mud and no sleepers? Brothers and sisters, if you are not born again, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you don't have the sandals of peace. God is giving us the full armor of God. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of you know, breastplate of righteousness, the the buckle of truth, the shield of protection, the sword of the spirit. We have and the sandals of peace. So if you are not a believer, if you're a Muslim, if you're a Buddhist, if you're an atheist, if you're a Catholic that you still have those idols and you pray to Mary and not to Jesus, you are not going to be saved. God wants us to put the full armor of God. So this kid, because they're not believers, and they're, uh, you know, they're playing on the paddle. So we know that there's a certain age 
bracket that those kids are going to be saved still or whatever you know i leave that in the lord's hands i know there's children who are born by the unbelievers but they're still of the age that they're still innocent god will save them but this point the lord is trying to tell us for those people because he wants us to be like little children right in order for us to enter the kingdom of God, he said he wants us to be like little children. So if we are looking to the dirty puddle, if we're look, playing at the dirty puddle, looking at the Lord, bare, you know, uh, not looking at the Lord and being barefooted, you are going to get sick. You are probably going to hurt yourself, you know, empty because you're barefooted. You can have, you can die. If you are going to cut yourself with a dirty thing, that's the literal way. Spiritually, you could also be cut by the enemy and die and lead to your destruction because you are not prepared and you are not ready. We need God's protection because Jesus is our only protection and He is our only Redeemer, Messiah, and Savior. He will give us the sandals of peace. Don't pray to the, the idols. Don't pray to your money. Don't pray to Mary. Pray to Jesus only because Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through Him. So not Muhammad, not the, the, not the Buddhists, no. Not Mary, no. But Jesus only, Yeshua HaMashiach. So she is actually... In this dream, she is actually breastfeeding her kid to save money because she loves him so much. If you truly love your children, you can find the true love through Jesus Christ. It is important to actually feed our children, not just with the milk. You know, start with the milk, teaching them with the words of God. You know, through singing songs, through praises, through simple Bible verses, those are feeding the Christians and the little kids with milk, right? But at the same time, you're saving, brothers and sisters. Literally, when you're breastfeeding your children, you're not buying chemically made uh, milk, but you're giving them the natural milk. So the Lord is trying to tell us, physically, Give your children breast milk. A lot of moms, they don't anymore because they don't want to disform their body. We need to give them natural milk because we're human. So they will absorb human milk, not animal milk because animal milk are intended to feed their animal children. They're animal children. And we are naturally made to be feeding our natural children. I breastfeed uh, my children, you know, until a certain point, then I give them the, the milk that are sold, you know. So we have, the Lord, I think, is trying to tell us we have to naturally feed our children and at the same time, spiritually feed them with the words of God when they're young. And as they grow old, it's no longer milk, but the solid food, which is they can able to read the words of God, the entire Bible for them. To understand it because they will have a relationship with Jesus Christ personally and Jesus will teach them. So brothers and sisters, being a fellow workers of the Lord, we need to teach this, this to our children and our grandchildren and our um, you know, other people. We need to go back to the natural way, to the old ways. Not the old ways of be, being a sinner, but the old way that the God intended to create the world naturally and we have to eat naturally and to live naturally you know if we use the other modern equipment we have to remember our eating that it should be natural because we're natural human we're not clone we're not whatever okay so first corinthians 3 verse 1 the lord said brothers i could not address you as spiritual but as worldly as infant in christ I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for solid food. In fact, you are still not ready, for you are still worldly. For sin, there is jealousy and dissension among you, 
Are you not worldly? Are you not walking in the way of men? So brothers and sisters, God is wanting to tell us that some, not just those unbelievers who are walking barefooted and drinking, uh, you know, milk, those Christians also who are still having jealousy, you know, uh, jealousy, sometimes I do and I ask the Lord for forgiveness and I actually caught myself you know when i immediately get to you know sometimes i think about oh they're lucky because they have this and they their life is just so easy they can easily do things this but then the lord will remind me god has a special plan for you you are lucky because you found the lord and you're safe you're a special daughter of christ and then i remind myself and i said oh lord forgive me we have to remind ourselves not to be jealous, not to to do the worldly things still, because God has great things planned for us. Not focusing on the fashion of clothes, not focusing on the fashion of the braiding of hair or putting makeup, not on the fashion of going to fancy places just to eat and show people on your Instagram that hey, you have you have eaten in a fashion, uh, in you know in a rich fancy place or not not to be known that you have this big fancy business but to walk in a humbly way god will still bless us he can give you restaurants he can give you businesses he can give you all these things that he wants to give you but he wants you to remain humble and use that blessing to serve other people by being compassion, helping them, be generous to them, visiting the sick, giving them clothing, food, and whatever for the glory of God. So brothers and sisters, this is why I'm telling you my aunt was looking at the dirty puddle, checking if there's fish. I told you we can find Jesus, Jesus in a dirty water. We can find Jesus in a clear living water because he is the fountain of the living water it's clean clean and pure and jesus is you know going to feed us with that living water if we read his words constantly the lord said in first king 2 verse 4 so that the lord may carry out his promise which he spoke concerning me saying if your sons are careful of their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul. You shall not lack successor on the throne of Israel. God wants us to walk righteously with him. And he will give us somebody to, you know, successor to the throne in Israel. And we all know Jesus is coming and he's going to reign forever forever with his remnant with his children he's going to make a new jerusalem new heaven and new earth so god wants us to walk in obedience with him you will prosper in all your way we will prosper in all our way and do and wherever we go we will prosper because he will bless the work of our hand if we obey him if we are faithful to him if we trust in Him and we constantly follow Him, in Yeshua's name, Amen. So brothers and sisters, Galatians 5 verse 16, But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Praise be to God. And that's what God wants us to do. We have to constantly walk in the Spirit. Faith in the Lord. Walk in the Spirit. How are we going to walk with the Spirit? <laughs> By bearing the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, kindness, humility, perseverance, generosity, self-control, um, compassion. See, those are the things that we're supposed to do while we walk. And that's how we should walk as a disciple of the Lord, as witnesses of the Lord in these last days. So brothers and sisters, why is the, my aunt telling me that she can't travel and she was deported? You know, when you obey the Lord, 
we will be protected and we will be brought to the promised land. But if you disobey the Lord, you will be going into exile. Just like in Matthew 18 verse 3 and said, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's why she's holding a girl. Because God is trying to tell us, in order for you to enter the kingdom of God, we need to be like ch little children. What is the characteristic of the little children? They obey. When you tell them, hey, come here. Come on. Come on here. Let's hold me. Don't go there. They will listen. And that's what God wants us to do. You know, when you carry a child, they will be happy. They won't question you if you carry them. Oh, you might drop me. You might. No, they trust you. And that's what God wants us to have in our heart. Just to trust Him like little children. Even if we know it's hard. Even if we know it's impossible. Don't question Him because nothing is impossible with the Lord. Look at what happened to Peter. When he, Jesus was walking on the water, right? Peter walked on the water too. He didn't drown because he looked straight at the Lord. He trusted in him and he obeyed him when Jesus said, come. But when he looked down and he doubted, he fell down. And that's the reason why the Lord said, don't doubt because you're like double-minded. When you doubt, it's like, Oh, I believe you, but, uh, you know, it's impossible that this will happen. That's double-minded. Trust in the Lord. It's like that's why there's a word optimistic. Because you believe. You believe. You are thinking positive. You're thinking positive because you have that faith. You believe that nothing is impossible with the Lord. You believe that with your faith, that faith can move mountains. And that's possible, brothers and sisters. The Lord showed that to me several times. Literally, even my car's aircon, it's blowing. It used to be my old car. It's blowing hot air because it's broke. But since I was born again and the Lord showed me and teach me about that faith as small as a mustard seed, I said that word, Lord, you said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountain. And then I said, I declare in the name of Jesus that this, you know, that the car will have cold prey on and everything that the, the, the Lord will fix it and everything. It will blow air and blow air. I said, blow cold air. And it literally blow cold air. And it was fixed. Who fixed it? Jesus Christ. That's why nothing is impossible with the Lord. He can give you literal house if He wants to. Even if I don't have, He can literally give me a house. You know, in what way? If you will say, you know, you don't have money. God can give you money. He can just suddenly, what if God will just suddenly allow me to see gold bars there and I will be able to sell it and then I will be able to buy my house and then do the mission work. Nothing is impossible with him. And he can do that in his name according to his will. And he can even he can even send people who are rich and just say, hey, the Lord sent me to you to give you this key. Here's the car key for you to have a car because you need this for your mission work. Praise be to God. Nothing is impossible to him. And he can even tell me, hey, you can open this kind of business. I'm going to put everything in place and then everything will be successful. Everything will be running smoothly and you will only have that business in these several places. So you will be successful and you will be able to speak the words of God. And whatever money you make, go visit the poor. Go visit those people in prison and speak about the words of God. God can do that mightily and nothing is impossible in Yeshua's name. Amen. And you can be able to give them sleepers, not only sleepers, but clothes, but giving them the words of God and feed them with literal food and spiritual, spiritual food. To God be the glory and praise forever and ever. And nothing is impossible. For God said, whatever you ask, you know, ask and you shall receive. Oh, praise be to God. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord said, we have to follow Him. Because those people who don't follow Him, what will
didn't happen. The Lord said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demon and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice low, lowliness, lowlessness. That's the words of the Lord. That's why, brothers and sisters, we really have to follow the Lord with all our body, mind, heart, and soul, and spirit, and with all our strength. That's why it's important to be healthy, because He will use us mightily in these last days. So we have to, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 verse 10, Or do not... Or do you not know that the unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So brothers and sisters, swindlers... Those people who do, uh, you know, pyramid schemes or whatever, or, you know, trying to make money out of people and cheating on them. Brothers and sisters, you're stealing on the Lord. So stop doing those. So brothers and sisters, why is it that I am fixing, um, I am fixing her hair and, you know, she said it's not, it's not right. And she's like, oh, hurting. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is reminding us in 1 Peter 3 verse 2. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair or gold jewelry or fine clothes, but from the inner disposition of your heart. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in God's sight. So that's why, brothers and sisters, don't overdo your makeup. If you probably just put like a tub tub of something, you know, or I, I put a little bit of eyebrows and, um, you know, not overdo that you are like painting your whole face. It's not that one. God created you special already. You don't even need to put makeup on. I don't put pow pow powder on even on my face. And so... Uh, we, the Lord is reminding us, it's not on the elaborate uh, fashion of the hair or putting too much makeup on or clothes, fancy clothes. That's not, it's the inner. And when your inner beauty is really coming from the Lord, the outer will follow because you will be glowing. We are beautiful in the eyes of God. We are created beautiful and unique. So don't follow the face of the Kardashians that they're stinky ugly because of how they run their life. If they repent from their sins and follow the Lord Jesus with all their body, mind, heart, and soul, they will be beautiful. Because they're actually beautiful in their, um, you know, the way God created them. They're already beautiful. The thing that makes them ugly is the way they believe in their fashion of whatever scenes they're doing, that makes them ugly. And you don't want to follow their lifestyle and their belief and their sinful life? No. Brothers and sisters, the beauty is in Jesus Christ. And how will you know it? Read the words of God in the Bible. So that's why, ladies, 1 Timothy 2 verse 9, likewise, I want the woman to adorn themselves with respectable apparel, with modesty and with self-control, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothes. So that's it. So clear. So why is it that I'm seeing my uh, son-in-law, you know, uh, worrying about the expenses in the restaurant? It's like they're spending too much money. And uh, my daughter was telling me in this dream that um, they're actually not making money. And actually it happened, it already came into pass. I was shocked. We were just talking. And then she said, you know, we're actually not making money. And mom, I can't help you. And so I said, you know, it reminded me about my dream. And I prayed to the Lord. I told her, I said, follow the Lord exactly. 
not on the expensive perfumes, not on the expensive fancy clothes. You love the Lord, but you have to follow Him thoroughly. Not on those high heels, not on those expensive bags. And she's not actually like that. But because of the the husband who likes so much fashion and now he she needs to you know we used to be fashionable but when we follow the lord we humble down we get rid of those and now because she married a guy who's so much on fashion very expensive stuff and now they started to to do the fashion she's coming back to fashion fashion again and i told her no 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 and i've been reminding her and i pray to the lord that they will go back to a simple, and I told them, live, you know, God will bless you more, bless your business, and also live humble. Because when you live humble, you don't waste the money out, you're saving it and help other people also. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord said, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river banks, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. Praise be to God. And that's the reminder of the Lord to each and every one of us. And I believe that they are walking in the Lord. And the Lord showed me that they will be going on top of the hill, holding hand, loving each other with love in their face because they truly love each other. And they will be going up on the hill. I know it's Mount Zion because I know he will be saved and his family will be saved in Yeshua's name. Amen. And see, and then they will be prosper, prospering according to the will of God. So brothers and sisters, this is not just about my life. The Lord is showing me the sample of my life in order for me to explain to you how it's supposed to be explained. It's like a parable in order for me to understand what the Lord wants me to share to each and every one of us. So brothers and sisters, we are not supp supposed to follow the weekend. We have to follow the Lord. Eat the words of God, which is the living bread and the living water that lasts forever. Fashion our clothes with the words of God, with the righteousness and salvation. And that's what we're supposed to do. And then focus, focus on the Lord with all our body, mind, heart, and soul, and strength. Because God is preparing the place for us and we will be there because we will be brought to the ark. We will be brought to the house, to the land of caution in these last days. Because after that, when all of us will be already in the, in the appointed places, it's not just in, in one place, brothers and sisters, it will be all over the world. God is going to choose a certain land of Goshen in different parts of the world. And all the children of God will be gathered there. And then when the time comes that the trouble will be everywhere, devastation will be everywhere. Like the time of Moses, there will be famine, pestilence and everything. We will be protected in the land of Goshen. And we will be waiting with uh, we will be waiting for the coming of the Lord. And I truly believe the angels will be surrounding us to protect us. So brothers and sisters, be prepared. God bless each and every one. In Yeshua's name, amen.